stuff in the organ or the piano. And uh, uh, I just I, I, I just want to say <laughs> it, it, the suction didn't work. So okay, yeah. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Uh, I've had a few on the internet, that, and I. I don't know if I made a mistake or if it's good or bad or ugly, but announcing sermon titles, and I, I always try to, I generally try to have a title that uh, sort of engages people, and hopefully maybe it might, they might prompt them to come, and so forth. And so uh, that's that's the story here. So kind of got myself open, you know, I uh, kind of stuck my foot in my mouth, I guess, or something like that. Um, anyway, <clears throat> uh the uh, title for the message today. At first, I wrote, I had one title and I changed it. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not. Uh, you, yeah. <laughs> and you did notice. Okay. Anyway, but my first title was this How to Make Your Spouse Angry. Mad. How to Make Your Spouse Mad or Your Dad or Your Neighbor, and et cetera, you know. And then I got to thinking about it after a while and. Um, I actually had a couple of comments on, online, and, and they said, uh, uh, well, I don't think I need any advice on how to make, one fellow said, I don't think I need any advice on how to make my spouse mad. So um, I thought, yeah, it's probably not that catchy. So I thought, well, let's go down to the deeper, you know, uh, thought of the matter. And so then I changed it to how does a God, what, when, there we go, when, does a God of love get mad? What makes a God of love get mad? And we, uh, we talk about the God of love. And one reason why is because he is a God of love. God is love, the Bible says. God to love. Um, he, loved, uh, he, uh, uh, he loved us first, the scripture says. And um, eons of scriptures, of course, about the love of God from the Old Testament and the New Testament and, and all over and all around. But I, I think there is some value in understanding. <clears throat> um, I think there's some value in understanding uh, what, make God, what makes God mad. And because God has become angry. Uh, uh, for, for instance, uh, well, let, let me quote a couple of scriptures first. The Bible teaches us as, as believers uh, in, in uh, reference to anger. It says, uh, let not the, uh, the, your, your anger go down upon, um, uh, let's see, let not your uh, anger, what? yeah, there we go. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, thank you. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. So when you're talking about the baby coming and everything, uh, Sharon, uh, make sure you kind of get it straightened out before you go to sleep tonight. So uh, anyway, and uh, then uh, so, but but the scripture says, "Be be angry and sin not." And uh, that's kind of sounds like somewhat of a paradox. But if we, as we look into the Bible, we read this scripture. Uh, you're welcome to follow along. It's just one short scripture in the book of Psalm, uh, the, the the Psalm. Psalm uh, 145, 8, it says this. It says, The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger, and filled with unfailing love. He is slow to anger. But there are times when God does become angry. And um, I think it's very interesting for us to at least Take a look at the times when a God of love, a God of grace, a God of compassion, a, a God who's filled with loving kindness becomes angry. What happened? Uh, you know, if you go into the book of Acts and you read about um, Ananias and Sapphira, and you read that um, it, uh, it, that was the, in the days of the early church, I mean the beginning of the church. The very beginning, the very few first few weeks, the apostles and many things were happening. Many things. There were many signs and wonders and so forth in that day because of the 
the, the ushering in of the dispensation of grace, this, of, of, uh, the dispensation of the church as we know it today. Well, here's what happened. Ananias and Sapphira, they went out and sold their property and uh, they, they brought their money back to the church. They were kind of uh, support, they were all kind of putting their money together and, and supporting the church. And, and uh, what happened? Ananias held some of the money back. And then I held some of the money back. And he, but he, he brought his money to the apostles. And he said, the Bible says he laid it at the feet of the uh, apostles. And he said, here is all of the money that we got out of our property. Lied. And uh, he lied about that. And uh, the Bible teaches that uh, uh, God struck him dead. God struck him down. That made God mad. That made God angry. And, and then, to, you know, to add insult to injury, we find that his wife came and she said, uh, just wanted to make, you know, she wanted to add to it. She said, I just, just wanted you to know that we sold everything and we're giving it to the, to the church. But she had a little secret in her mind too. And God struck her dead. Well, uh, that's what happened. When, when, when God is... Uh, uh, at least in some situations. Now, there is a place in the Bible, and I'm sorry, uh, I think it is, you know, I, I was looking, I don't know where it's at, 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel is the 6th chapter. I'm just going to tell you the story about it. Anyway, David was moving the Ark of the Covenant, which was, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, was placed in the Holy of Holies, in the tabernacle, in the wilderness, and it was good to go to the temple and so forth. But anyway, um, the Ark of the Covenant was very, very sacred. And um, they, the, the children of Israel, they were moving the Ark of the Covenant. What a glorious thing. They were moving the Ark of the Covenant. It was a prized possession of Israel. And they were moving the Ark of the Covenant to another place. They put it on a... By the way, they built a brand new cart. I mean, isn't that impressive? I mean, I would think it would be impressive. They built a brand new cart to haul the Ark of the Covenant on. And David had ordered it, and they were pulling it along the, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Bible says that the oxen stumbled, like I stumble, and uh, the oxen stumbled, and the Ark, you know, kind of shifted and started to fall off. And there was a man by the name of Uzziah who reached his hand and touched the Ark. And, and uh, to hold it up. Now, on a new car, moving it, taking very good care of it, but it started, the oxen stumbled and he put his hand up to, to, uh, to hold that Ark of the Covenant so it wouldn't fall off and, and bu uh, burst open or anything. And God struck Uzziah, I'm sorry, Uzzah, dead. The reason is, the reason is, I think we, we, we could categorize that in, in the, arena of, uh, uh, the, the arena of reverence. Uh, the Ananias and Savara story about the uh, lying to God p perhaps could be in the, uh, uh, obviously that of telling the truth and, and following truthfulness and stuff. And so, so God gets angry at certain things. But anyway, because the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant was never to be carried by a cart, even a new one, the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be born, carried by the priests. By the priests. I don't know how many in front, how many in back, but they would, they would put it in the middle and lift it up somehow with poles. And it was, it was, it was to be born on their shoulders, which was, which was very uh, emblematical or symbolic. And uh, uh, because they were irreverent and they overlooked God's instructions and it's very important that you and I follow God's instructions because it displeases God when we ignore his instructions but anyway so it's an interesting story in the Bible um, there are many many other things that that uh, we could talk about one that I um, uh, would like to talk about is uh, I, I think that um, <clears throat> uh, it's probably one uh, I mean, altogether, not just on, on God's anger, 
But it's one of the better stories in the Bible. It takes place in Exodus chapter 32, verses 11 through uh, 14. But um, it's the, um, the, the, the story of, uh, of the Ten Commandments. And uh, it's just an interesting story. And uh, there's just a lot of stuff in, in it that we just kind of, we don't really, we, we've kind of missed. And the story of the Ten Commandments, and you know the story of the Ten Commandments. God, or rather, uh, Moses took up the, the tablets up to God. And what I really think is impressive, and there must be some meaning here. There must be something that you and I can get out of this. But God took his finger and he wrote the Ten Commandments on those stones. For Moses. God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger. I think it's really kind of neat. But anyway, um, this part of being angry is um, and about God's anger. It, it, that, that the anger of God should overflow into our minds a little bit. You know, sometimes we don't necessarily like to talk about anger. And I'll, I'll get back to this, but I cannot make Dolores mad. Can't hardly do it. Uh, I have been teasing her lately. You know, we do a lot of things together now. You know, like, uh, well, we're putting some gravel in in the back, and I'm putting some gravel down for the building. <laughs> I mean... Poor, poor Jack. He will never come back here again. Bless his heart. He, he, and, but anyway, he said, you want to know who's on the committee? No. Anyway, so anyway. But anyway, we've been, we've been working together. And, you know, and so I've been teasing her a little bit. And she retired June 30, 2017. And so I've been retiring. I said, you know, or I've been teasing her about, I said, you know, I can't believe, really, I seriously, how I made it without a foreman before June the 30th, 2017. And she just goes, you know, this, you know, and, and it is a joke with us. I want you to know, it is a joke. And uh, because she says, uh, 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 no, 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 don't, don't dump that much. Move it farther, move it farther, move it farther. You, you need a bucket farther down. You've been through that, haven't you? <laughs> I can't believe you admitted that. With me. I'm picking on Jack today. No more picking on Jack today. It's over. <clears throat> but anyway, but I can't seem to make her mad. But you know, I knew a, I knew a fella. I, I've told you this before, I think. And if I, you know, don't. And anyway, I told you this before. I knew a fella that when he was a young man, his father whipped the wrong son. He whipped him instead of his brother, and his brother committed the act, whatever it was, and all of his life, he was so angry and so bitter. At his father, this is my understanding. I mean, I wor I've worked around them. The boy, the, the young man, he was probably in his 30s then, 30s, 40s maybe then. And his father, his father lived on the top floor. He lived on, in the basement. He never spoke to his father again. All of his life. He lived in the same house. I mean, I think that's kind of, that's bizarre. He died. His father died without him ever speaking to him again, and he lived in the same house. One of the questions I asked, you know, because I wasn't living around there then, I said, did this person's name, did he go to the funeral? And he did. He went to his dad's funeral. But anyway, anger, anger. I'm not talking about that kind of anger today. I'm talking about the things that make God angry. And irreverence makes God angry. Angry. Um, lying uh, and not being truthful makes God angry. Being disrespectful. Did you know that? Being disrespectful. Um, I can find this chapter in the verse for you because it's in my notes, but I don't want to get caught up in, in, in looking at the notes because that will slow us down. So, but uh, there is a story in the, um, I believe it's in 1 Kings about, verse, um, about chapter 9. But anyway. It's in the historical books. And, um, you know, there was Elijah and there was Elisha. And Elijah was not, the Bible says, because God took him. He's one of the few, he and Enoch, that God took to heaven without 
going through death. Well, anyway, when Elisha was ministering, he was a, a, an intern of Elijah, and then Elijah, Elisha was on his own. He was prophesying, preaching. He was a godly man. And there were 40 young men, 40 young boys. Some uh, versions say young boys, some say young men, doesn't matter. And here's what they were saying. And they were taunting Elijah. They were teasing Elijah, Elisha. And they, were, and they were saying this. They said, they were saying, go up, O Baldy, go up. See, they had heard that Elijah had, had, was taken by God. That he went up. And so they were playing a little spin off of that. And they were being disrespectful to God's prophet. And uh, they said, go up, old ball, they go up. I mean, let's see you go up into the sky like God took Elijah in the sky. But they were doing it in a fun, uh, you know, making a, a very disrespectful way. And the Bible says that God sent out two she-bears and destroyed 40, those 40 young men. That made God angry. Made God angry. To be disrespectful to someone. And um, I don't know if this is a, a good message or not. I just thought it was interesting thoughts, you know, about the things that make God angry. Now, we're back to Exodus 32. You thought I left it, didn't you? But we're back to it. The Ten Commandments. And when God came off, or when Moses came off the mountain, and he was bringing the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. When he got over to the crest of the hill and he saw the children of Israel, they had become impatient. They had, um, um, you know, they had lost sight of who delivered them out of Egypt. Uh, they had lost sight of the words of Moses, the words of God. And they said, you know, we've got to have a God, you know. And Moses was still in the mountain. He was carrying. He wasn't around. And they were saying, hey, we, we've got to have a God somewhere. We, you know, we've got to have something to worship. So Aaron, of all people, Moses' brother, Aaron, of all people, he said, okay, everybody, let's put all of our jewelry together. Take off those rings. Take off those necklaces. Take off those headbands. If they're gold, bring them all in here and we'll melt them down. They melted them down and they made a golden calf. They made a golden calf. They were worshiping an idol. They needed a God to worship, they thought, other than the God of heaven. Now, in the beginning, God sent his... God was very angry at that. The loving, kind, patient... God, compassionate God, became angry because they, they, they turned away from the true and the living God and began to worship an idol. And so God actually, and this, it's, a, it's a longer story than this, but one of the initial things that happened is God allowed an, a, a, another country to destroy 30,000 of the Israelites, uh, to do away with 30,000 of them. There were probably several million, probably around at least three million. They only counted the men, and it, that came to about a million. So you add the wife and some of the kids, you get a little more than that. But in, anyway, um, and then uh, to add insult to injury, um, uh, Moses, uh, I don't quite understand exactly how he did this or whatever, but he melted down the... Uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the um, golden calf, and he made the people eat it. It became toxic, and they got sick and so forth. I mean, but in, and, and you remember what Moses did? He took those Ten Commandments, and he broke them. Of course, it was si significant of the fact that the children of Israel had broken the main commandment, and that is to worship the Lord thy God. They were to be they to, were to be worshiping God, but they had ignored that and were worshiping an idol. So uh, the 
the, 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 the stones that had the Ten Commandments on it, and they broke the, the document, so to speak. It broke. You know something? Dear, I get it. I get it again. Moses became angry at the same thing God became angry about. Sometimes we, in our, and I mean this very carefully, sometimes in our PC world, we are hesitant to say some things or to act in some ways because we don't want to offend anyone. And I don't think there's any true Christian that really wants to hurt somebody just to be hurting them. I, I, I don't believe that. I believe that, we, that the true Christian that loves everyone, some are harder to love than others, but we love everyone. But we, we, we understand as we look at the story of Moses, God, and the children of Israel, the Ten Commandments, that what made God mad made Moses mad. He was upset. He was angry. And he threw the tablets down and broke them. And um, the children of Israel became sick. Many were killed. And uh, there is one interesting portion here that you will never find anywhere else in the Bible. Ain't, no, ain't nowhere else. I've got to have a drink of Diet Pepsi on that before I start. The, this is a Coke bottle. Uh, Tom, I don't want to offend Tom. You, you know, me being politically correct, I don't want to offend Tom. So this is, I saved the bottle and There's one thing in the 32nd chapter of the book of Exodus you won't find anywhere else in the Bible. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. You know what? You know when, the, when we say prayer changes things? This is one place in the Bible that you can go to and find out that prayer changes things. We know prayer, prayer changes things. But here's what happened. God said... He was very angry at Israel. And he said these words, God says, I am going to destroy. I'm going to destroy the children of Israel. <coughs> he was that angry. By the way, this is, in, this is one reason, that I'm, the, what I'm going to tell you in a minute, this is one reason why we should pray for our country. We should pray for our, uh, our world. We should pray for our leaders. We should pray for our communities. Because God changes things. Now, but this is much different in the fact that Moses actually changed God's mind. Exodus 32. I believe in my, with my finite understanding it's the only place in the Bible where a human changed God's mind God says I am going to destroy them and and Moses pled with God um, Moses said to the Lord he sought the, the favor of the Lord he said oh Lord why should your anger burn against your people? Then secondly, he said, Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that you brought them out of Egypt? This was his, his prayer and kind of his argument. And um, um, just a note. Bruce, uh, uh, Edison, somebody's walking uh, on the outside of the door back and forth. I don't, I'm not sure who it is. But um, anyway, um, anyway, he's, anyway, he made a claim to God. He made a prayer to God, and um, he says, Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Anyway, I'm sorry, I should have read that a little clearer here. But um, he made a, an argument like a lawyer would. 
to God and he said, don't destroy your people. Because Egyptians are going to say, hey, God, you brought them out of Egypt just to kill them. But uh, God was angry. And so was Moses. But Moses pled with God and said, God, don't do that. Only place I know of in the scripture where an, a human changed an order, so to speak, the mind of God. And so you remember what happened. The, um, uh, the people repented and they turned back to God. And God said, Moses, you cut out two more tablets, bring them up, and God rewrote them. He wrote the Ten Commandments twice. Same commandments, but he wrote them twice. And I think it's interesting that you and I, by prayer and by, from our hearts, can change the wrath of God on the world of evil. And when we pray for, you know, the Bible says of my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I just thought it might be interesting. I don't know. There's a lot more we could talk about and a lot more instances that we could talk about the, the, the things in the Bible that made God angry. But I think it, it, it's at least noteworthy because there, it's in the Scripture a lot of times. So um, um, I guess the moral of the story is that we need not necessarily always to be content what is going on when we have prayer and God if God be for us, who then can be against us? And trust in the Lord uh, with all of our hearts and lean out on our own understanding. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Beth.